Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Khushamdi. Ji ayanu. Khuyi morakh. Pakhair agale. Ni hao. Juna shumme. Washmale. Ohio Gonzaymas. Guten Morgen. Ola. Bonjour. Priviet. Kaifa hal. Hale shuma chatore. Alan vasalan maraba. Buna and a very amazing good morning to everybody who's tuned into PTV World and are watching World this morning along with the very energetic, the very amazing Shiza Hashmi and Shazad Khan. Hello, Shiza. How are you today? Because I you were absent yesterday. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I was absent because you gave me the viruses just the day before. Well, I didn't. I didn't even touch you. I mean, we were sitting just close. Maybe you sneezed or whatever. So, yeah. Oh, but I didn't anyway, even you guys. Sneeze, man. Okay. Come I, on. I'm just kidding, man. Okay, but anyway, take right. care of yourselves because this is the season of, you know, all the viral thing is going on. So you don't want to be bed ridden because uh, <laughs> there's so much to explore out there. So just go out and do it. Exactly. That's other what it that, is. Yeah. Other than that, okay, I totally forgot. But oh, yeah. I'm energetic <laughs> because I had my coffee in the morning. And wow. why are you so? energetic well, before that why are you holding this ball okay uh, I, I don't think that I should actually be telling you why I'm holding this ball okay. because uh, today ladies and gentlemen we'll actually be talking about International Drug Overdose Awareness Day and today we've actually skipped on top stories as well because we feel that this topic is actually very close to everybody's yeah. heart because a Absolutely. lot of people a lot of precious people have lost their lives not Absolutely. knowing what to do once they got addicted to whatever drug they were using. But other than that, you know, since you asked me, I'm going to answer that and I'm a gentleman. So the only reason why I'm holding this uh, rugby ball is, which does not even look like ball, well, the athletes over here are actually going to punch me after that. They will <laughs> knock me down. But, but what they have done is that they came up with a brilliant idea. Yeah. Now, for example, if we talk about Africa, if we talk about Europe, if we talk about Asia, South Asia, what happens is that in, in all of these continents, within the countries, what they have done is that they have linked sports with, you know, making sure that, you know, kids actually play sports yeah. so that they don't get into drugs. Now, what happens is when Idle Mind is a devil's workshop. Yeah, yeah. So if you do Indeed. not have anything to do after school or after college, after university, because we're not very habitual of studying a lot, so what happens is that you obviously get into or you fall prey to hmm. all of those other people who think that you know it's very cool to use drugs or to try them out. so you basically always start with trying them out you know you're doing something new hey let's do it what's the harm but before you know it you're harming your family as well your environment because it's not only you who's being affected by this it's your entire family friend circle because you're a totally different person you have locked yourself in the room indoors and you're not doing anything you're just being the you know victim for yourself so you don't want to do that and other than that you know a lot of celebrities a lot of people on daily basis die because of drug overdose i don't even I want know you... whether to smile or not because you know it's it's like a very serious topic indeed too. and just lately you know mac miller died because of overdose just before that few weeks before that demi lovato was in bed because of overdose so these are some of the things that we're looking into we are a part of the society this is happening around us but we, but in pakistan especially we're sort of and seeing that, I mean, we're neglecting that because we don't want to face the reality. Exactly, that's what it is. But other than that, there are a few other things which we need to consider. The law enforcement agencies need yeah. to consider a few things as well. For example, we share a 2,200 uh, kilometer probably uh, uh, a border with Afghanistan yeah. as well. Yeah. And all of these products are very easily available in FATA. And, you know, in Afghanistan, they actually cultivate opium too as well. Yeah. So, you know, I think that, that they play a role. Our border forces need to be more stronger as well. But other than that, I think what we need to do is that we need to ask these amazing people who've actually made it to the show. And there's this one lady, amazing lady, who's actually been working for this cause too as well with KKAWF. Uh, organization now what they have done is that they have joined hand with Pakistan rugby team and they are actually hosting a match on the 15th of September yes, in sports absolutely. complex and it's time to act I think that's what it is and the way I'm going to act is actually I'm going to introduce my guest to you yeah. ladies and gentlemen so that they can further speak about it on my right hand side uh, she's a social activist. Her organization's name is KKAWF, which is Kareem Khan Afridi Welfare Foundation. Yeah. She's none other than Miss Christina Afridi. Hello, how are you? Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. Thank you very much for joining us. Alongside Miss Christina, we have joined by somebody who's actually been said to be the trainer of the trainers. He's a cyclist too as well, and he's. Wow. Uh, well, this is what he said. First, he said that, you know, I'm the number one rugby player in Pakistan. And then he, and then he, became and then when he saw the captain sitting right next to him. He said, OK, probably number two. He's none other than Mr. Hamza Hayauddin. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam. I'm doing well. Thank and you. And here's your ball. Thank you. I don't know even how to throw it. But thank you very much for being with us. Alongside Hamza, ladies and gentlemen, we have been joined by somebody who was earlier over here on the show, I think, one and a half year ago when the Italy rugby team actually arrived in Pakistan. We okay. did a show with them. 
He's none other than Mr. Adnan Niazi, who is the captain of rugby team Islamabad. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam. I'm doing well. How are you? Thank guys? you very much Thank for you. joining us. And last but not the least, ladies and gentlemen, it's. Uh, Female it's a, representation, love it. Wow, that's great. You know, I was about to, uh, you know, do it in a cooler way. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is for the very first time that actually I'm going to introduce a female rugby player on the show, and it makes me proud. It makes me, it gives me immense pride yes. in uh, introducing her. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've actually been joined by Zaina Khan. She's a rugby player herself. Hello, Zaina. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank good. you very much for joining us. I'm very sorry, but my producer wants me to start with you. Yeah, you know, right. women empowerment, equality, <laughs> that comes into you as well. So, Zaina, how do you think in the first place that connecting overdose awareness with sports is a good idea? I think that um, rugby... Uh, I think that uh, rugby is related to this in that kind of um, When you get depression on from your home and, um, you know, because of other things and everything. Rugby helps you in this way that um, uh, when you come in the ground, yeah. you just take out all of your anger and depression, it just goes out. So um, I think that when, um, drug overdose, you can, like when you take out all, all of your depression and all of your anger in that ground, mm -hmm. so you don't have to you know, find alternatives to just right. clear Channel your mind your and energy. everything, mm -hmm. yes. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for s saying that. But I think that, you know, it's a brainchild of Christina Fidi, who's yeah. present over here. Christina, it's been long that you've been working and you've suffered through it too as well. So first things first, if you don't mind, share your personal experience, how it was. And then when you initiated with this drive yeah. and where are you right now? Because we have done a lot of shows on this, right? Yes. Yeah. So what inspired you? Yeah, well, I mean, the inspiration was not a, a very happy inspiration, but... Uh, uh, four years ago, I lost my only child, 19 years old, Karim, uh, uh, to drugs, and uh, I really didn't know what to do. I mm -hmm. said, either I kill myself, my right. reason to leave has gone, and uh, why, what should I do? So I said, I better use my, my energy mm -hmm. uh, to something positive and uh, make a foundation with his name that he will live forever right. uh, through that helping the others, I mean, not to get trapped to the, in this uh, um, menace, I mean, mm. and the, it is uh, a very, uh, it's a subject that we have to talk a lot. Definitely. And uh, I mean, really, I appreciate that we all here mm. uh, uh, talking about this, how to get the kids engaged in sports. Okay, so you've been doing this for four years now. Yes. And every year there's a different sort of theme. Yes, yes. I mean, like Shazad said, I've been here in many different occasions with our team uh, of KKAWF. First uh, year we did cycling. Okay. Hamza also was part of it. Okay. I mean, he's always part of it. His well, entire great. family is a hostage <laughs> of uh, our... <laughs> is part of it. So uh, it, last year we did uh, a football. Okay. I mean, very successful, of course, with a, a girls' game. And not only a girls' game, we like to show talent. It's right. not a kiddo thing. So, for instance, Hajra Han, that's the captain of our national team, yeah. okay. she was contracted to play in Europe. So, I mean, we really encourage and we want to show our talent. Hmm. So, um, uh, this year we choose rugby. Hmm. Uh, uh, we thought that it's a modern way of a kabaddi, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, that we can go far away. Kabaddi is so localized, hmm. but uh, it, we, you can go international representing right. Pakistan. Right. Exactly. Hmm. But before we move on to speak about the sport itself, what I want to know is, that how do you, don't you think that it's getting very easy over here or it's very accessible to get drugs within the country? And don't you think that the government and the law enforcement agencies need to play a role? Anybody who wants to answer can actually go ahead with that. Because I know a lot of people, uh, to, to be honest, and I think one needs to be honest while doing their job and too you know, as well. And you keep on counseling them, yeah. there's, there's no way that they're actually going to listen to you. They'll yeah, be like, yeah. oh, you know, if this happens, I'll do this. If this yeah. happens, I'll do that. <coughs> I think the thing which goes undermined or which is not actually paid attention is that people are suffering from anxiety and depression quite a lot these On a days. Larger scale, and yes. they don't want to go to a psychiatrist and a psychologist. Please yeah. go ahead. Well, uh, Shazad, uh, this just the world report, drugs reports were just shown now by UNODC presented here in the country. I mean, all the law enforcement were together. 
And uh, uh, unfortunately, in Afghanistan, 60% uh, has been increased the production of, uh, of opium. Right. So, I mean, and uh, Pakistan been a transition country, which is not a only transition country, mm -hmm. became a consumer country. Because, I mean, 200 million is a good market, it's a big market. Right. So, the people are operating here. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is that uh, to give an alter alternative. I mean, to talk to people that this is not the answer for uh, mm. uh, for for your anxiety, for your depression, mm. there are other things. Yes. So in sports, I mean, just stimulate your uh, 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 kicks your um, uh, what, what's that hormone that I forgot? Endorphin. Mm. And mm. I mean, Adrenaline. you f you oh. you make it makes you feel good. Okay. So that kick you have already within you. What we want to try is that with sports, you will find that way. Yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. And you know, just to Sorry. Oh, I think going off, you raise an excellent point, which people often neglect, is mental health is such an important part True. of uh, the whole process in devolving into drug overdose or addiction. And what sports gives you isn't just a physical outlet, but uh, I can speak for the gins at least, the sense of community, the sense of brotherhood. So even if you're down, they'll cult. come and they'll get you out yeah. of it. So you have this entire social and network, network structure and family outside your own family at home. And that for many people can save their lives. Like I know for me, when I've been down, Rugby has gotten me through some of the toughest parts of my life. Okay. So. Well, that's great. You know, it's great you talked about mental health. So just a while ago before the show started, I was talking to Christina over here. And she told me that there was, uh, did you actually hold that uh, sort of, okay. So there was a survey sort of, but it was anonymous. Mm -hmm. So a lot of kids were uh, meant to, you know, fill, uh, fill it. And the results were that a lot of kids aged, you know, even eight to nine or 10 years had actually tried out drugs. Mm -hmm. So first of all, how are you, you know, getting access to that. Second, I, I'm totally open to the idea of, you know, mental health and you should discuss it and everything. But kids, you know, at the age of nine or eight, what sort of very depression or what sort of, what sort of anxiety do they have? Look, or if not that, what are some of the other anxiety. things that propel you in that direction? Uh, this is, uh, she's, uh, it's a mm. curiosity. This right. is part of growing up. Yeah. You know, now that's why you have to direct what's happened. This, we all had gone through that. Right. You know, we all had done something for the first time. Mm -hmm, the something first. we never did again, yeah. right, but something right. we repeated. So that is a vulnerable moment mm. that we have to get ourselves engaged physically mm. because that's where you always start to, you know, the hormone is playing havoc inside you. Okay. You need the, uh, you need to you, you need to run you need to waste your energy right and right. so you ca how do you do that mm. there is only one way that is through the sports okay. whatever sports you choose is through is through the sports okay. so obviously this anxiety is also there mm. because you know how kids are pressurized yeah, today yeah, yeah. every parent wants the kids to be straight A's mm. yeah I mean this doesn't exist exactly right. I mean the life is it's it's nice because it's very right. one is an artist one is an anchor mm. one is a player one is a, a something else. Not everybody should be a doctor or an engineer. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you very much for saying that. I think that parents out there might have heard this as well. But let me move on to the captain of the Jeans 2 as well. So, Niazi Saab, what I want to ask you is for the very first time when you got to know that there is going to be this collaboration in between KKAWF and Jeans or probably Pakistan Rugby, what were your thoughts and how do you think that you're going to convince people out there that either to fall into the hands of the evil you should better be playing sports. And do we have an open platform at Jin's team as well where people can actually come just to avoid where whatever they were doing? Yep. Um, the thing is, the, if there is a child, he's very curious, as Christina said. He's looking for mentors, for heroes or something. If they channelize that energy and they start building up mentors like rugby players or sports, any kind of sports, so they can follow and take lead from there. Otherwise, they would be watching movies and they would be seeing anything and they would just follow that. So exactly. rather than that, they would follow some sports. They can get into a family. They can come play, and well, like the downtime they have, they can discuss with their friends, yeah. some genuine friends, and they can have a lifestyle because rugby is a lifestyle. It's just not the, you go to the pitch and just it's, a community. it's over. Mm -hmm. It's a community. It's a lifestyle that you get into a diet, then you get into gyms and all. So they keep busy that way. Exactly. Okay, that's great. Now mm -hmm. what we need to do is that you need to actually talk about your own experiences because you're a source of inspiration for a million people out there who are watching you because you kept yourself busy with sports, education, mm -hmm. no drugs, no extra friendships. How did you guys do it? Let me start with Nyaisa. Well, mm, it was not that hard because from very young age we were in sports mm -hmm. from the school time. Okay. So when we came to a team then 
the, the lifestyle, we just get along with it. Just there was uh, so many trainings at times, then there were the diet plans and there was a the sleep time and you're just so tired of that. That, hmm. that there's no time left. No time left for any other thing. Hamza, what about you? I had an interesting take because I was going off this and it's discussing the same thing earlier. It's an unpopular opinion, but it's the truth. Drugs make you feel good. That's why people do them, right? Uh, so at a very low point in my life in college, I discovered rugby, and rugby became my drug. So it was uh, the rush you feel from running down the field, scoring your first try, or from tackling your first person. Like that adrenaline hit, I think, is like the greatest high anyone could ever have. So when I when I discovered that at a low point in my life, that's what saved me, and that excitement and that love for the game is what helped me get through it. Wow, that's uh, great. So this is, like, I think, ten years. So back. now, for all those people who might have been, you know, you you might have inspired them, and if they are thinking that, you know, okay, probably we're not that late, yeah. and we need to start. Do you think mm -hmm. that they actually need help of a medical professional too, as well, and then probably they can get better because they say that if you're a drug addict, you know, for the entire rest of your life, you know, you'll always be recovering. They would never say that you have recovered. Okay. So who do you think can help all of those vulnerable children who are out there? And just to add to that, what happened was that yesterday I watched an ad film okay. and there was this guy who, was, uh, who, uh, who had a son and then they were going to collect his son's report card. So while they were on their way to the school, the father actually asked son whether you want to eat ice cream. Hmm. And he said, you know what, I probably want to check my result first and then eat ice cream. And then his father was like, son, whether you passed or failed, it doesn't really matter. Hmm. Let's have ice cream first. Do you think that the attitude of the parents can even play a vital role in making their kids not do drugs? Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. No we need question. to shed light on that. Who's mm. going to do that? Well, I will do that. Sure. Uh, actually, uh, for instance, in the case of Kareem, uh, he had, uh, according to me, no uh, reason at all to to get uh, to try something or, uh, because he was not really an addict, it was that thing that went wrong because sometimes you, you, you don't know about your, your system, your health, uh, how, it, how it you can try once, it, mm -hmm. it works, try second, third time. I'm and sorry, then, I'm, I might forget it, yeah. but I think for, for a country where you do not even get clean drinking water, how do you think that you can get, even if you're getting drugs, do you think, what makes you think that they're not mixed with anything? Which they is more are troublesome. all altered. I yeah. mean, you, you, we have cases that food's been altered. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, imagine that because if you 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 have something that takes you completely dizzy, you don't know that this is a drug or mm. is something that you know they mix with the uh, floor cleaner and right, make. Right. So the, it's all a lot of them are made at home. You know, mm. about so what about parents now? What role do you think they need to play? Well, I think that they had to be closer. Uh, this uh, technology they had really put us apart. So uh, we have to get back the sense of family. Mm. We have to discuss uh, right. things. We have to open things. Although we ourselves, we don't open with our parents. Mm. I, uh, you know, There's a communication would, gap, certainly, of course. There is a communication gap, but we have to uh, understand that during the adolescence, mm. we might, as kids, we find friends that for ourselves during that period is more important than the parents, yeah. the people yeah. that love you. So not every friend mm. is a friend for right, you, right. really. Yeah. Exactly. So you have to be more, uh, judge more, no? open more. And your parents are, you, are always going to love you forever. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. No matter what happens. Yeah. So, uh, Sorry. Go ahead. Always. Yeah, please go I ahead. I think Shahzad raised an excellent point in this, though, where that ad you mentioned, parental structure and guidance at home is huge. Uh, my mother was always my best friend growing up. So I felt safe and secure coming to her with my problems. And a lot of kids don't have that privilege. Okay. So they feel the need to hide these things and they can't have discussions with their parents about things like, I'm thinking of experimenting with this. So they don't have that safe space at mm. home and that's what causes them to look outside. Exactly. Home. Okay, that's great. But you know, moving to Zaina, first of all, I'm so proud that you're actually a part of this. So when you decided, you know, I'm going to use my, uh, you know, my sports probably in being a part of this and you discussed it with your family and your friends. Were they first of all open to the concept of you uh, sort of, you know, promoting something that is related to dogs, drugs? Um, and uh, what sort of response are you getting from people? Uh, first, when I started playing rugby, I was asked by my sports teacher to join rugby because she already knew how I was. I was really active in sports. Okay. So um, when I uh, first went on the ground, the rugby ground after 
Hmm. The, I saw that this game was meant for me <laughs> because, okay. um, you know, uh, you can just hit anyone you want and you <laughs> don't <laughs> get into <laughs> trouble. <laughs> Okay, so, right. um, and also I had anger issues and like, does I, that help I used with to, anger issues? Mm -hmm. um, it does really, okay, nice <laughs> because, um, Obviously because it's a contact sport. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was a, you know, I used to get angry at everything. Right. So when I started playing rugby, um, what I noticed that I could hit everyone and then I used to just take out all of my anger on them. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it helped me a lot because, um, uh, I used to take out all of my tension and right, everything that right. not um, I didn't get any problem from my home but um, you know you get some of problems course, yeah. sometimes so all of that tension and everything that used to you know you I know so if you weren't out. playing rugby or something you would probably be channeling your energy into something that is not probably favorable for you something yeah. wrong or maybe yeah. Yeah. you know let's hope not but maybe in the future maybe something related to drugs or something which is great that you're a part of rugby Okay, but, th but then at the same time, you know, there's, there's a lot of things which I wanted to say. Obviously, we're going to talk about this tournament after a short break, which we're headed out. But before going, I think there's one thing which I needed to ask all of you. And that is that in every way, you know, there's, there's always a time in life when you feel that, you know, you should probably go ahead with that. Now, I want you guys to come up with a solution where you suggest to all of our amazing viewers that, you know, when you are hitting that mm. point, make sure to avoid but how that's the question go ahead please answer please tell them uh, i think that uh, what we do in the schools and with the youngsters right now it's uh, you have to understand how your body works okay. uh, i say that uh, adolescence is uh, is the worst period of one's life okay you don't know how your body is going to end up mm -hmm. you don't know how you're going to look like Everything is facade is so important for you, mm, right, you know, right. so you have lots of insecurities mm. So you have to know that if you feel like that you want to kick or something or you shout with your parents And sometimes you say I don't know why mm. this is part of you know the, It's part of the, your hormones playing this yeah. havoc inside you you don't so when you understand that Oh, why I'm doing this why I want I feel like to cry mm. I feel, and there is no reason you feel yeah. like to cry yeah, I mean but uh, yes, you have that not it's only natural, natural. Right? It happens So how, how do you do that? And uh, in exactly what Zaina is saying, you see, like she's a, uh, uh, just show what I meant. She had this anger issue mm. and she put it out. She yeah. managed because what we do is that we help the youth to, uh, to identify, understand mm. emotions and manage. Yeah. So right. she has found the, the exit. So mm -hmm. that's the way that it's not that, oh, I'm feeling so bad. Oh, no, my father uh, uh, fought with me and then uh, I'm going to. No, it's, not, it's everything be magnify and yeah. become dramatic. Exactly. So mm -hmm. you have to control yourself. Okay. And uh, control it to the sport. Hamza, what about you? I think the important thing to bear in mind for anybody is that you're not the only person to go through it. And yeah. it's never too late to ask yeah. for help. Like until even at the, like you think it's the last point, the point of no return, you can always take a step back and ask for help and find people who are willing to help exactly. you. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would say rather being staying alone at home, just go out, mm -hmm. say it out loud, yeah, whatever is in your mind, just say it out loud. Mm -hmm. Talk to your parents. If you have a teacher you like or anyone who can counsel you in a better way, just talk to them. Amazing. Uh, we were talking about parents previously and I think that they do play a very big role in this thing. Yeah, absolutely. I know that my parents supported me in playing this game and it did help me. And I'm talking about other kids that do face th these problems and drugs and everything. So I think the parents should really encourage their children mm -hmm. in playing sports. I, there are parents in Pakistan, they're like, I, we, they don't want their daughters to love, go out and yeah, play yeah. and open. Yeah. And also my parents did also feel bad when I used to play openly in the open ground. Everybody used to watch us playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my father was there like, what are you doing? So I did tell him that it's okay. I'm not doing anything mm -hmm. wrong yeah. and it is helping me. Yeah. So um, when you play this game, so it does help you in many things. Amazing that is. And you know, at this, uh, at this point of time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to share uh, uh, one of the quotes by Dalai Lama, he's, he's a monk and he actually speak, he's a spiritual healer too as well. Somebody asked him about negativity and how to avoid it. So his answer was very, very amazing, very mesmerized. So what he said was that, you know, the way you look at world, you know, the way we look at th things mm. and the way their appearances attract them, just know that these things are not the way they look. So 
Yeah. And and once you have this feeling with inside your own head, you know the things, the affairs, or probably when when you have a connection with somebody else, mm. it's just not like the way you think it is. Right. And I think you'll get away with everything as well. But we're definitely heading out for a break. Welcome back to World This Morning, ladies and gentlemen. For those who have joined right now, we are talking about drug awareness and um, also how sports can help you in uh, not becoming a dr drug addict or, you know, saving your life from this menace. And uh, it's great because we have some amazing uh, rugby players from Pakistan who have represented Pakistan internationally, nationally as well. And someone who, uh, you, who is, you know, so close to this cause of uh, saving lives exactly. from the menace of drugs. Amazing that is. Well, thank you very much, Shiza, for, uh, for giving them all of this information. But then at the same time, it's an eye opener ladies and gentlemen up to 700 deaths on daily basis up to 700 deaths wow. not exactly reported and unreported because of drug overdoses over here within Pakistan so I think we really need to pay attention to mm. this problem because we're a country full of youngsters yeah. almost 65 percent I think the government needs to put in a lot of effort but now what I want to ask is now for example Shiza, when I used mm. to go to school we had big grounds mm. I mean mm. grounds as big as a football yeah. field and then we had a game a uh, period as well where we were actually supposed to play mm. for one and a half hour right. and we used to feel very lucky because it used to happen twice a week and then we had inter-college matches then we have higher education mm. commission actually organized inter-university matches as well but I do not see the trend now because a lot of schools have just moved into houses to save their rental cost. Right. So let's start from you. What do you think? How do you think that the education sector needs to play their role? Well, yeah, the definitely. Uh, uh, Shazad, it, it is in the Constitution, Article 12 and 13, mm. that uh, sports is compulsory okay. in Pakistan, yeah. okay. but it has not been implemented, yeah. unfortunately. I mean, you say on your time, uh, uh, during many other people' time, but not right now. Right. Yes, the campus are not appropriate. Mm. And not build it seems that you can cash more on building make more classes than really put it outdoor okay. uh, uh, very few uh, schools have a prop uh, uh, playground okay. for that and this is, is it's unfortunately very wrong because in the this law says that every school should provide a minimum of four hours mm. of uh, uh, physical exercise per week. Per week. In, okay. in, and, and in failing to do so, mm. the establishment, establishment should be shut. Okay. So it, this is, it is in the Constitution. I right? didn't create that. So if you consider but that... But say a lot of people don't know that. Even I didn't know that. Well, it is in the Constitution. Mm. That's what I'm saying, that we really have to focus. When you talk about youth, which is the future of your mm. country, that's why we, we named this uh, Save Tomorrow. Right. Uh, there's... Uh, event I mean when you talk about that you 60% of their population that is it comes to 135 mm. million below age 25 yeah, yeah, and yeah. we are nowhere on sports mm. forget about uh, cricket the cricket is even is not in that great okay. uh, shape in any case hopefully to improve mm. But I mean, all the all the other sports. We used to be the best in squash. Mm. We used to have hockey, right. the best. I mean, where are we? We have 135 million below age of 25. This is equivalent of nine countries together in Europe. Mm. Exactly. Why we are not in? I mean, excelling in sport in the world. Right. What's right. what's happened? I mean, there are a lot you of know? things we we can talk about. But now I think what we need to do is we need to talk about this tournament, which is actually yeah. happening on the 15th, 15th of yeah. September which is Saturday at 3 p.m. in Sports Complex. The entry is free. Pakistanio, yeah. the entry is free. Please make sure <laughs> that, you, that you guys show up. But let me ask Niazi Saab. So Niazi Saab, what's going to happen? Are you guys prepared for this match? And which team will be playing against you? The team we are playing against is Punjab Barbarians. It's actually the rest of the Punjab. Okay. So our team this year, we are looking for from really good competition. And the squad we have this year is really good. So all the clubs out there be aware, I would say. Let, let me see whether Niazi Saab is even ready or not. Can, can you, can you, okay. 
is, is this you, how you throw it or is this how you throw Why it? Why is it streamlined? Why is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone? How, how do we throw it? Uh, under. It's under, yep. Not under over. Arm? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, I go. think I'm. It's that easy. You're all <laughs> it, it, it was just fine. If you want to play on Saturday, you're welcome to join yeah, us. We, yeah, we will definitely come because she's just not going to come because she just told us that you know it's her birthday. So no, I'm not going to come because I have news in those hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it, it's perfectly all right. But how do you prepare yourself? And let's talk about rugby a little over here uh, within Pakistan as well. How do you think the government is, is government supporting this sport over here? Of In course, Pakistan. the government is only supporting cricket, so we don't have that kind of support over here. Okay. Yeah. Not even rugby. Else rugby, we have so many sports and so much yeah. talent in Pakistan. If mm -hmm. it's like we, these guys could get paid or anything, mm -hmm. they would, we would really do something really good in sports. Okay. Yeah. Zainab, what about you? You wanted to add something? Uh, I want to say that um, this is a difference between other sports and cricket. If I told everyone that... I'm playing cricket, then they're happy, like, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. When I told them about that, I, I started playing rugby, they're like, what is that? <laughs> How do you play it? That, that game which you just throw everyone? Right. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's great, you know, we're happy that you're a part of it. And I'm happy that you're actually, you know, all of you are speaking about the fact that a lot of attention is going towards cricket and not on rugby because P2B is now totally independent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are. And, you know, the best part is that we are actually under observation too as well. So I think that, you know, we are going to reach out to all of those authorities yeah. who will make it possible for all of us to, to have a better future for our kids and yes. for ourselves mm -hmm. but now Zainab I'm, I'm sorry that I'm I'll, I'll have to do that and that is what are the most weirdest thing your parents have actually told you while you ask them that you know I want to play rugby <laughs> probably <laughs> something like you know there's there was this thing which I was getting in my head I'm glad that my parents aren't like that but I don't know maybe with others <laughs> no, I'll tell you. So when I used my to play a lot of said. netball, so I was the <laughs> netball captain as well. So there were these girls in my class who weren't willing to play, and they were great players. So you know, I, I don't even like netball. Them. You know, the game is like you should always be playing basketball. basketball. What, I know what, there's a the difference. Netball? Yeah, just throwing the ball. <laughs> no, the okay. So anyway, so there were some of the girls who didn't want to play because their parents didn't want them to. Yeah. So I asked them, "What's wrong in you know playing netball? You're doing it inside the school premises. What's wrong with it?" They were like. I don't want to get the tan. My parents told me not to. Oh, yeah. What? Okay. what? But Yadisa wants to get out of here. Um, my mother was said, Beta beta dwarma takar maru. What about you, Hamza? Uh, my mother was actually a national sportswoman herself when she oh, was wow. younger. She was mm. a national level netball and volleyball okay, player. Great. Uh, so she's always encouraged us, but it's always, you know, first focus on your studies. Bella, you could, you, you could, you, the irony is, that my father was like, you'll never be a professional athlete. <laughs> Ten years later, I'm a professional athlete in two sports. I'm like, oh. Wow. <laughs> you so see, you what I'd like to add here. You achieved it already. Uh, What's your father's name? Asad Hayaudi. Asad Bhai, they claim, you know, we have, we have done it, we have achieved it, we are on national television, see, and we're going to do more in China. You see, that's what I'd like to ask, is that the parents, to behave like her parents, Zaina parents, to his parents, I mean, that we have a tendency, the parents to protect, extra protect the kids and say, Beta, bare rain jare, bot garmi hai, or bot tanda hai. I mean, there is <laughs> always <laughs> some problem. <laughs> you have to endure, you have to learn. Mm. You see, on the 26th of June, that it was work days, we had these volunteers from small to big. We went flagging, uh, pamphleting around town, and it was 46 degrees, and everybody wow. said, How can we go? I said, Bring water, mm. put uh, uh, sunscreen. Yeah. Uh, sunscreen, bring hat, and that's it. At 5 o'clock, when we finished, I said there is anyone dead here yeah. no <laughs> we are all alive mm. so you have to it's the time that you have to get used to right. different kinds of weather okay, but, and outdoor the outdoor life thing. outdoor is something else Absolutely. exactly yes. it is and I think everybody needs to play their role uh, within the social fabric or within the society yeah. this is your social responsibility as well but Christina and for everybody who's present over here there's this very important question that you if you see as a friend that somebody is in shambles and he or she actually needs attention and you have tried counseling them a lot of times yeah. and every time they come up with the lamest of the excuses available within the world, mm. how do you think that you'll be of help to them? That's true because we, when you get the addict... Do we tell their family? Do we take them to the hospital ourselves? What do we do? Because they just don't listen. 
Just yeah, never when you get trying. addict, you find all the excuses of the world, mm, right. which of course it's only valid for you, but not for anyone right, else. Right. So it, that's why don't get in there because you really have to justify your wrongs doing all the time. Mm. You are not happier. Okay. You become dependent. Mm. You are wasting your money. Your entire family is suffering. What is what, what, what do you, you gain? Right? You, know, you, yeah. you, you gain yeah. out of it. Mm. It's just a logic. What I discuss with the kids, this is a question of logic. Mm. I mean, so you have to be intelligent right. and learn from people's mistakes. Exactly. Mm. I mean, you know that people die. Up to 700 people die every day, ladies and gentlemen. I think the biggest issue, though, and that's an issue I have with that approach, is we are so quick to judge people for being addicts. And a lot of the reason people won't, like, if I have a problem, I won't tell you because I know you'll judge me. Mm. What is my incentive? So you have to mm. realize they are in their minds and you have to enter them in that zone. Amazing. Thank you very much for being yeah. with us. You know, we were very short of time, but ladies and gentlemen, please make sure that you go to Sports Complex yeah. on this Saturday, which is 15th of September at 3 p.m. because yeah. it's, for a, it's for a better cause. Entries for free too as well. And the only thing which I wanted to say by the end of the show that was that even when you eat, you know, you eat uh, within a certain amount or the quantity mm -hmm. which your stomach actually allows you yeah. to digest or probably absorb. Now, whenever we exercise, we exercise for 45 minutes, 50 minutes, because if we do it more than that, you know, we get exhausted. So that's how life needs to be. And I, I do know that the rugby players over here are smiling just because of the fact that my endurance only lasts for 50 minutes, but it's perfectly all right. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, ladies and gentlemen, whether you want to walk, uh, horse riding, swimming, mm -hmm. gym, whatever mm -hmm. you want to do, please make sure that you have friends who are into sports and they will actually drag you into sports too as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for people who have actually been counseling their friends for not doing what they're actually doing, I think the only solution is to start talking to them and they really do not need to be your friends too as well. But they need your help and yeah. do it in such a way where they do not Don't abandon them, I mean, yeah. 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 No, but you really do not want to get into that Of course, yeah. Hole, right? yeah. So, yeah. so it's better to actually maintain a distance. Yeah. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for this uh, very amazing contribution to the world of sports as well. We want to see more tournaments of these sort where we raise public awareness. Hmm. Shiza, do you want to say anything? Uh, there's just one thing, please. Of course, it's very, as generic as it sounds stay away from drugs but you know if you do see someone who needs help yes help them beyond your measures help yes. them beyond your capacity because yes. you have no idea how much in need that person is and we have yeah. brought kka wf foundation you know which is working for this cause yeah. too as well you can actually go online check them you can talk to them whatever and for further details log on to our facebook uh, fan page which is with the name of well this morning on twitter well this morning without a g on daily motion and youtube well this morning and the fabulous repeats going to be at 5 past 11 in the night till the next time one two three good, good morning, morning. Thank you.